And I want to cap this off with a quick story. When, the, when COVID hit and I'm looking around and I'm thinking, we're going to get, people are going to be home, Zoom stock, Amazon, they're going to be getting everything delivered. You don't just buy Amazon stock. You look at the Echoes. I go and I buy every cardboard box stock I can. Who makes paper? Who makes the stuff that Amazon needs? That's an Echo, right? You need to look beyond two feet in front of you. All right, and let me talk to you about Echoes. And I was thinking about how I wanted to end this talk, and I want to give you a story. Bear with me. It's five, about maybe five minutes long, but I think it, it is a great cap on this, and it talks about echoes, and it, it, it's part how-to, it, it's part motivational, and it's really, really about perspective. But I think, it, I think it puts what I want you to do in a different light. Let's go back to March, March 19th, 2020. During that time, so two years ago, right now, middle of the month, couple day, about a week before I was going to give the talk on March 19th, which was a Thursday, I was sitting in that chair. Okay, I hope you can see it. I'm in a four by three. And I was sitting in that chair. And unlike a lot of people, when I have ideas, I don't go to Google and I don't look stuff up. Just like, you know what? I mean, how many of you have turned your brain off completely because every friend, even your mom's phone number is in here and you don't remember it, right? So what do you do when you want to do something? You go to Google instead of actually thinking. Let me tell you about what I was actually thinking about. I decided I want to give a talk. I decided I wanted to tell you what industries are going to thrive. So the first thing that I did was I went back there. I grabbed a cup of coffee. I went back there. I sat in the chair and I went room by room in my head, in my house. Okay. Looked at the computer. Zoom stocks going up. Went into the kitchen. Right. More cooking stuff. Right. I go around the house. I get to the basement. I get to the basement, and in the basement is where my wife and I have a number of things, but among them is our workout equipment, the treadmill, her Peloton, my bike setup, the pull-ups, the bands, the whole nine yards. I'm thinking, home equipment, right? Okay, then I'm thinking, all right, outside the health clubs. Health clubs are going to get smashed because people can't go to the health club. Okay, people can't go to the health club. People won't drive to the health club. People won't park at the health club and so on and so forth. Then I'm thinking, hmm, I used to belong to this amazing health club. The reason I belonged to this amazing health club that was in downtown Chicago, I didn't live in downtown Chicago, but I worked in downtown Chicago. I used to go to the health club near my house in the morning. I would work out, shower, and get in my car and spend like an hour and a half sitting in my car trying to get to work because the traffic is awful, even though I lived, say, 25 miles away from my office. So I decide I'm going to join a health club downtown, awesome health club. Every day, I would get up, and at 4.45, I'd hop in my car, I would drive down to the health club, I'd get there by 5.15 or 5.20, right when the door opened, I'd walk in, I'd work out, grab the smoothie, grab the coffee, get in my car, drive over to my office, I'm at my desk by 8 o'clock. I'd go home. But on the weekends, I would go down there, and I would work out in, in the morning on Saturdays and Sundays, and I would take longer, I'd grab breakfast, I'd get in my car, and then I'd come home. Different route, I'd take a different street. On the street that I would go on led me to a feeder ramp to get to the expressway to get home. But on, in this route, there was two things that were absolutely certain once I was about to get on the feeder ramp. There's a stoplight and two absolute truths. I got caught by the light every single time. That's one. And the second thing was there's a homeless person who was there who would ask me for money. You know, they kind of would hold up the cardboard or they'd wear the cardboard box, right? I need food and that kind of stuff. So I always had cash in my pocket. So every time I would pull up to that light, I would roll down the window and I'd give them five bucks. Five bucks on Saturday, five bucks on Sunday, all year long, except when Thanksgiving rolls around. Between Thanksgiving and Christmas, what I would do is every week or a couple times a month, I would go to Target, I would stock up, I would buy all these gallon plastic glad bags or whatever, and I would fill the shopping cart with everything that these homeless people could, could that I could think of that I, they could use that I could fit in the bag. I mean, I would put baby powder and toothbrushes and toothpaste and soap and, and mittens and cash and whatever, and I would give 10 bags away on Saturday and 10 bags away on Sunday, and I did that for a month. Okay, so now, 
Fast forward, it's 2020, but I don't belong to that health club anymore and I don't drive down there because my wife and I in 2017 moved in this house. It doesn't make any sense. It's really far away. So I'm sitting in the chair. I'm running through my house mentally and I'm thinking about all the stuff that's gonna happen and I start to think about the health clubs. Then I start to think about the street. Then I start to think about the homeless people. And I think, who's gonna take care of them, right? So a couple days later, the weekend hits. I go into the Target. I fill up the 20 bags. I go down, I drive all the way downtown and I drive around until I can get 20 of these away. And I think about the Echo. Would you think about something like that ever? And I will tell you, we are all connected first. Everything you do, cause and effect. What you do has a cause, what you say has a cause, what you don't do, don't say, has an, has an effect. Your causes have an effect. It will ripple in places you will never visit and you won't know. So the one thing that I really want you to do is I want you to think proactively about what you do and what effect it has on others. And I want you to think about if you do something, do that before if you do something, think about what effect could it have and reflect on it. And those, you know, we're all moving at a breakneck pace. If you would slow down and just think about everything that's around you. I came up with 32 of those 36 industries without turning a computer on. And I'm telling you, you've got to, you've got to slow down. You've got to force yourself to stop and think about what's going on around you or how what you're doing affects everything around you. And you start thinking like that, and I guarantee you will start doing the right things that pay the dividends that you need to. And I, the last thing that I would say is, for the love of all that is holy, the next time you bitch or moan about something, I want you to think about this story and think about those homeless people and think about how good you got it.